If we are ready, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. And uh, I'm going to ask Chandra to read the Open Public Meetings Act statement, please. On Wednesday, January 8th, 2020, notice of this meeting was mailed to the press and the current of Acorpa Township. Notice was also delivered that day to the Acorpa Township clerk and posted on the bulletin board at Township Hall. Hall. Mr. Delabarca? Here. Mr. Ellis? Here. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Here. Mr. Price? Here. Mrs. Sullivan? Here. Mrs. Summer? Here. Mrs. Salagi? Here. Mrs. Bird? Mr. Castellano? Here. Mrs. Bird was not feeling well, um, so she decided to be cautious and, and go ahead home. Can we all please stand for the flag salute, please? So I want to thank everyone for coming out. Um, this is our uh, normal work session. However, our focus for this evening will be on the budget. Um, we are going to hear uh, a presentation and have a lengthy discussion on that. Um, before we do that, I just want to say a brief word. Um, we're all watching. Uh, the coronavirus situation very carefully. Uh, I want to give a, a shout out to Dr. Gruccio and her staff. They are working 24-7 uh, to make sure that we are as ready and prepared as we possibly can be. I think as everyone realizes, not only do the facts and the guidance change daily, they change hourly. So I again want to give um, the world of credit to Dr. Gruccio and the staff for doing what needs to be done for the district. And I'll turn it over and see if there's anything, uh, Kim, you'd like to say on either subject before we move forward. Thank you, Mr. President, um, for um, your kind words. Uh, yes, um, we have been working 24-7 uh, um, on the, the COVID-19 situation it rapidly changes it changes um, all the time and we, we are receiving I just want to assure the public um, guidance from the governor's office I got to be on a conference call with the governor last week uh, the New Jersey Department of Education New Jersey Department of Health the county office county superintendent um, is in touch with us every day in fact we have a, a meeting on Thursday our school physician who we spoke to just the other day and our school nurses and we just continually remind our students and staff of the importance of washing hands and having good hygiene um, using tissues wiping surfaces helping each other out a team effort of um, reminding each other and also keeping surfaces clean we met with our facilities team um, they, they assured us um, that um, our buildings are clean they are clean thoroughly I should say disinfected thoroughly uh, each and every night our transportation department same thing uh, food services security and administration in this room today we met with the full administrative team we had called an emergency meeting for one o'clock um, to discuss um, some of these items that I shared with you but also um, some of the directives that we're receiving from the county office and from the state which means that we have to create online learning opportunities um, for our students um, as well as addressing uh, free and reduced lunch, uh, food services, um, and um, special education needs. So while we're cleaning and disinfecting, um, we have met with our department, and the different department uh, supervisors and principals and discussed um, how to be prepared for uh, hopefully not to school closure, not an outbreak, but uh, we have to be prepared. So I will stress what's being stressed to me, do not panic, um, just be prepared, okay? Also want to share with the public and with the board, we have professional learning days this year for the very first time, a half day on Thursday, backed up with a full day on Friday, and that's a great idea. We had a lot of work planned for our staff, but due to this situation, we will be using that time to plan those online lessons. Okay, quickly, I just want to review uh, for the board and for anyone who was not here the full day kindergarten plan. 
As you know, we have advertised and we have had sign-ups for a full-day kindergarten. We have um, a great interest in it. And I just want to remind everybody that there was a strategic planning process where three community meetings were held. Um, and we heard very loud and clear how the public would like us to research and look into a full-day kindergarten. We also looked in how to approve student achievement, safety, um, areas of the building, safety and security. Um, SEL partnership streams and full day kindergarten as I mentioned. We had town hall meetings this past year um, which um, was part of the research that we've done but we also wanted to hear from the stakeholders the feedback they had. The rest, and we explained the rationale for full day kindergarten but there were fears and there were hopes. There was questions about schedules, um, about enrollment and class size, about transportation, food, services, personnel, resources and supplies and our research answered those questions uh, to the point where we were able to create a plan. We also talked about um, the full day or the preschool uh, grant which we found that we can apply as we implement full day kindergarten we can apply for that grant. Here's the catch, you cannot apply for that grant unless you have full day kindergarten. When we look at the resources that came back to the to districts who have, um, the, who have received the, the, um, the preschool grant, um, that's extra revenue, extra uh, support from the state uh, for those programs. So we're looking to be on that list. There's many schools, districts in Atlanta County that have um, preschool and that receive that money. And we want to get on that list to help us expand what we have. So our research became a reality. It became the reality that we were able to present the board with a plan to consider. We were able to uh, put a plan, build a plan into the, this budget that we presented to you. Um, why full day kindergarten? We stress it and we will continue to stress it. There's 584 school districts in New Jersey and there's 40 school districts that uh, do not have full day kindergarten. Being a school district the size that we are, being a school district that offers a comprehensive, comprehensive education to our students, we owe this to our students, to our community, for the future of our community, for future savings. And what I mean by that is not only are we going to provide um, opportunities to improve student excuse me, achievement, we're going to provide opportunities for the board in the long run to save money because right now a lot of the money uh, is going to remedial services and different uh, specialties that we need. By having full day kindergarten and having those students have foundational skills and be able to meet their needs, we, we're going to cut down on that throughout uh, future years. Um, I talked about how it's a quality education, it prevents remedial instruction, and it is an investment in your future, preparing your students. Uh, right here, real quick, anybody that was not here, this is the list I'm talking about. This is the money and funding that school districts have been receiving um, from the state of New Jersey to support their um, pre-K uh, programs. Here's the research, as I told the board before, this hasn't changed, this is what I presented last week, but it just talks about um, how full day kindergarten does uh, show improvement in student learning. These are also two links from the Children's Defense Fund and the Department of New Jersey's education uh, that supports um, our quest for a full day kindergarten. So our details, our enrollment expectations based on the surveys that we put out. During, in the fall, if you were with us, you saw the numbers of being 500 students, but based on our uh, birth rates and what we're receiving with registrations, we're going for 440 students. Right now, Mr. Santilli, how many do we have registered? 212. So there's 212, okay? So if that number doubles, we're, um, you know, clo close to the, to the 440. But we don't know, as some folks said, when that yellow bus drives by and on August 31st, uh, what's going to you know happen in terms of enrollment? So we're going to we're going to plan for 440 being the, um, the the max. We're using our current facilities. Uh, no need to build. No need to add on. Um, we're looking at different instructional spaces and non-instructional spaces becoming instructional spaces. Our food services can handle the volume. Um, our transportation. Um, needs six additional runs, but that's already been presented to the board and we've already looked at that in terms of extra runs, buses that were purchased, um, and employees that need to be hired. So if anyone's interested in assisting us uh, transporting students uh, to and from home in the Egg Harbor Township School District, uh, please uh, let us know. There are opportunities for uh, full-time positions that have benefits. Our curriculum resources have been 
reviewed by our area, content area supervisors and appropriate materials and resources have been presented us included in this budget, including classroom setup and um, student tables, computers, technology, and play supplies. Current locations for kindergarten at this time will be at Swift, Slayball, and Davenport primary buildings. Future full day uh, schedule is not 2AT, but it gives you an idea between 9.15 and 3.30 uh, what's going on in terms of academics, social time, um, um, social emotional learning, character education, uh, the lunch that we would serve, uh, the play time that's so very important, and uh, the special areas that kindergarten would receive. And that's very, very important um, to the learning experience. So kindergarten would have um, the, the physical education, the technology, the art, and music. Curricular resources, uh, we shared with the Board of Education. We broke down um, what the needs would be. Uh, also, the classroom conversion cost and the staffing needs. Dr. Charlton presented this last week and also uh, to the Board of Education, the staffing needs um, for current kindergarten to occur. Um, if you were with us in the fall, you would see that we would need, we would need what, what was it, 15? 15, uh, but because of analysis that we did by walking through the buildings, by looking at class size, by um, talking, and could, we realized that we could condense that need to four classroom teachers for efficiency uh, reasons. Staff re reallocation impact on class size. Uh, we're looking at a class size increase of approximately two students, um, and that's to even out the class sizes. Um, this class right here that you see has 23 students in it, so um, there are some teachers who are currently teaching 23 students in a classroom. <clears throat> Transfer requests. To give you an idea of uh, who's interested in teaching kindergarten, this is the results of a survey that Dr. Charlton put out who would be interested in teaching um, full day kindergarten and these are teachers from these grade levels that who have requested to go to the kindergarten level. Here's your staffing costs and calculations. Your total cost for full day kindergarten is 1.5 million. Based on our initial research in the fall, we, we shared a $2.8 million uh, figure, but because of more research and more study on the topic, uh, we are able to bring it down to 1.5. That is in this current budget. So, so far what we've done, we had an interest survey, we gave you the number, open enrollment date, we're preparing for this budget. We promised the groups uh, that met with us in the fall that we would present uh, the findings to the Board of Education it, during the budget presentation, and that's where we are. Our preschool expansion grant information to follow, and welcome to kids. Okay, so I wanted to make sure I gave you that quick overview. Maybe there's something you missed last week, you didn't understand. Um, for anyone that's new to, in the audience, um, for you to hear it firsthand about uh, what we planned and what we put in place. So we're pleased, we're happy, we're very excited um, to be able to, to fit this in and hopefully get this passed and make this work. Okay? All right, Mr. President, that's what I have. We are going to move to um, more budget talk. No, we're not. What are we moving to? Uh, um, as the board pleases, but we had initially done work session and then the budget presentation, but it's up to you. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll go ahead through our um, different topic areas. Now, only one committee met, but um, okay. sure. I'll look for administrative updates in each of the areas, and then we'll move right into budget. Okay. Gotcha. So Good into sir. finance and operations, uh, I'll ask uh, Chandra if you have anything to update the board on. I do. Thank you. <clears throat> so for finance and operations, we did not meet, but before the board takes action, I uh, want to just highlight a few things. Um, so one question came up uh, with transfers. So twice a year, the business office reconciles payroll um, transfers for personnel during budget in the spring is may not necessarily where the staff ends up once we roll out the next year's schedule, as well as um, if we, like last year's budget was in the spring, settlement wasn't until the summer, um, so this budget transfer um, looks hefty, uh, but as the board will recall, part of the raise for this year's 4.1 with the um, EHTEA was funded by opt-out. The union decided to take that benefit away, um, so a large chunk of the transfer is coming from a budget line uh, called other administrative costs, which is where opt-out is budgeted. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, accepting gifts, we actually got six gaming sets for eSports. Uh, we have, that's including the laptop, the earplugs, and um, the mouse, the mice for um, our eSports um, club that we have. 
uh, we, the company donated six whole sets. We also received a donation uh, for pop-up tents for um, girls track. Thank you, Jamie. Um, highlight asset disposals for this month. We have some um, old facility vehicles and equipment. Um, they're cleaning out by the transportation garage um, area. We actually have just piled up. That's where our graveyard is, if we call. Um, transportation has done a great job with getting their assets disposed when they're no longer of use. Facilities hasn't done it in years, so we actually had them inventory and create the list for disposal. Uh, on this agenda, you'll also on this um, agenda you'll also see a refinancing for our Xerox lease purchase agreement. Um, basically, what we're doing is um, CST copiers uh, were of a smaller scale, and they all had their own individual printers within their CST offices, which means there was one in the main office by the secretary, a big copier, and then there was individual printers with each of the four or five offices. Um, we decided to streamline the process as part of the special ed evaluation and create the centralized printing as we do district-wide. Uh, with that, there are apps through Xerox we'll be able to use, such as a translating app, so IPs can be translated to different languages for the um, parents at home, and I'll uh, utilize those. Um, it is actually coming in as a cost savings because the leases were actually established five years ago or longer, so the new copiers are now more efficient and cheaper, so our payment is actually going down. <clears throat> and uh, last update is not on the agenda, but just a general update that came up is where are we with vestibules? And um, we did update last board meeting that it's gonna be starting the second or third week of March. We are still on track. The materials, we just got a meeting on Monday. Materials have arrived to go ahead and start the process. We are gonna be in, building, in our building starting about two or three weeks. It's scheduled as the middle, excuse me, all elementary schools, K through five, are going to be upgraded before June 30th. In the summer, will be both middle schools and both entrances of the high school. So we actually are on track with vestibule projects. Um, and we will keep you abreast as we keep going. Any questions on finance? Any questions, board members, on finance? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll go ahead and move to curriculum. Uh, anything you'd like to update us on, John? Uh, the curriculum committee has not met. Um, we are finalizing our aviation academy plans, and mm -hmm. as soon as that is finalized, we will be bringing that to the whole board so that you are uh, brought up to speed with that development and excitement. That's all. Very good. Any questions? Board members. Okay. Um, Terry, anything you'd like to share with us in open session? Yes, Mr. President. Um, all nine members of the board are part of the personnel committee, and tonight in committee we discussed uh, new staff proposals for the next year's budget, which Dr. Gruccio covered so well in that last presentation. And we also talked about upcoming job fairs. Uh, the next one, I will have a booth at the Glassboro High School job fair, which is April 4th, and that one is focused on recruiting diverse applicants. So we will have a booth there. And luckily enough, our cameraman Ian gave me a great report on our HR recruitment video, and he's going to have an addition for me to look at on Thursday. And so hopefully we can premiere it next Tuesday night. Thank you, Ian. Very good, thank you. Any questions? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that video myself, <laughs> personally, but you know. Um, Okay, moving into policy. I, I just wanted to say, I um, wanted to thank um, Mr. I mean, Dr. Charlton for, I'm just glad to hear that we're uh, having a, going to a recruitment for, to, for diverse candidates. So I just want to say thank you for that. And I'm back. So uh, I'm just going to share what took place at the uh, policy committee meeting. On Thursday, March 5th, 2020, Members of the Policy Committee met to discuss policy agenda items. Present at the meeting were Mr. Santilli, Mr. Castellano, myself, Mrs. Bird, Mrs. Sullivan, and Mrs. Al Hauk, -Elko. Hauk Elko. Um, additionally, Ms. Um, Chandra Anaya, Business Administrator, Mr. Tom Beck, Food Service Director, and three head cooks from the Food, Service, Food Services Department were also present for the first half of the meeting to discuss policy 8550. The following, the following policies and discussions were pursued at the meeting on March 5, 2020. The policy committee reviewed two policies and one board regulation. The policy committee reviewed the safety patrol policy and board regulation for safety patrol, which is number 5860. Uh, both the policy and regulation are new and mandated and mandated and require two readings. The policy committee recommends, excuse me, to the board 
both the policy and regulation for 5860 for the second of two readings on March 17, 2020, with no additional updates or edits. <coughs> Excuse me. The committee also met with the business, also met with the business administrator, food service director, and three head cooks, which represented the high school, Fernwood Middle School, and Swift and Swift School. These representatives were invited to the committee to discuss policy 8550. After collaborating with the members of, food service, of the Food Services Department, some minor edits were made to the policy, policy number 8550. The policy committee recommended to the board the unpaid meal charge and outstanding food service, services charge, 8550, with, edits for, with some edits for a single reading on March 17, 2020. I just want to say I think the meeting went well. Um, I think we had a lot of input and gathered information and were able to make a um, create the policy that would be um, best for all involved. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions on policy from board members? Seeing none, before we go to our uh, budget section, uh, two things. First, do we have items for action? I see some field trips, but perhaps Dr. Gruccio wants to say something about field trips or not. Yes, this is kind of like an oxymoron. Um, we do have some field trips placed on the agenda um, that are to occur at the end of April into May and into June. Um, looks, they look like they are um, ones that we usually go on. However, due to the uh, current situation regarding the COVID virus, I have um, pretty much canceled field trips from now until April 30th. So we're asking for approval just in case things change and we're, we're covered, but I will be uh, speaking to um, all these folks one-on-one -on -one, and Steve and I, or Mr. Santilli and I are going to be reviewing uh, those tomorrow. So just to be clear, like here you have boys, uh, girls and track team going to Penn Relays. Right now, competitions, trips for competitions, academic and athletically, athletics are still on the docket. Um, so we are going to do that when we will buy to NJSIA's um, guidance on that. Right now, we said we received an email today that says competition is on. So that one would stay. Um, as far as the other ones, it's um, pretty much canceled. So. Okay. So then with that, what we're going to do is go ahead and I'll ask for a motion for 6.2 and 6.3, please. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Delabarca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. yes. Okay. At this point, uh, we're going to move into our budget presentation, and I just want to uh, let, uh, I just want to let uh, members of the public uh, know that uh, board members have uh, submitted uh, lengthy questions, comments, suggestions in advance to our administration um, on the budget already as a result of our prior two, meeting, uh, prior two meetings that we've had on budget already. And so we've, we've already uh, begun that part of the work. And, and Chandra will share uh, some um, the highlights of, uh, of that exchange as well as she goes into her presentation. Thank you, Mr. Castellano. So budget 3.0, it's our third official meeting yeah. after uh, <laughs> rolling out the actual budget. Can you explain what that means? Sure. Budget 3.0, so starting in October, we had um, curricular areas, supervisors, speak to the board about their goals for the next three to five years, depending on the department was how long their plan was. Talking about year 2021 and what that year entailed in their plan, what resources they would need and what their attempts uh, were to roll out for their special departments. Uh, we then from October all the way through January, actually into February, we had facilities and um, athletics as well. In the end of February, we actually had the first budget meeting as far as, hey, hold harmless, you know, uh, what we know for sure we're going to have for costs next year 
gave a little history on state aid, um, kind of like a fundamentals terminology kind of a meeting that was budget 1.0. Um, last week we had budget 2.0 which actually included the actual state aid received and presented a balanced budget to the board and the community. Since then board members did ask questions. More information has come from now until the budget is actually approved through the hearing. We constantly get more updated information for costs for next year from different vendors. So it's a little bit of a moving target um, when we like to update the board and the community on a weekly basis. So this is the third version of that update. So the beginning, we'll just recap a few things. Year to year comparative, we actually have in the previous version um, a last five years um, for this comparative information, but this is just last year to this year. Um, we're proposing a budget with a 2% increase of the tax levy. We did receive additional money in state aid. We have some small changes in our local and federal resources. Um, fund balance, we did explain in budget 1.0, if you want to reference that, what fund balance means. It is our excess surplus from previous years of not spending all the money or getting more money in. And there's actually less money saved to put into this budget than in the previous years. I can go into more detail, but it's in 1.0, so I will bore you. Levy detail, the imp tax impact to the taxpayers of this current budget proposal. So if we decided as a board that we were not going to go to 2% cap, hold the budget at no levy increase, because we operate on a July to June basis, but the tax bill comes on a January through December basis, um, the second half of the year was already going to be increased by um, almost 2.5 cents, 2.48 cents. What that means for an average income, average household of $100,000 value versus 200, and then you can continue to do the math if you have a higher home, uh, the impact would have been $25 to $50, depending on the size of your home already, if we didn't use the extra income from the tax levy. This budget is proposing a 2% tax levy increase, uh, which is about 4.5 cent increase. What that means for an average home of 100,000 versus 200,000, is um, $45 to $89, and that's an annual number. That's not a per month number, just to recap on a calendar basis. State aid. Yes, we did get more money in state aid. It's about $6 million. We not only talk about how we're underfunded, this is a reflection of what we truly are underfunded. What this is basically saying, based on our demographic, our enrollment, our average um, household income, um, special needs, students, uh, low-income students, all those factors taken into consideration, transportation costs, they're saying that the state should have given us $74 million, they gave us $54 million. We appreciate the increase, but we still have some ways to go. So we, how where all the money go was one of the questions that came uh, from one of the board members, a quick recap. Um, so we kept existing programs and here's what we're calling new. Contracted salaries, we do have two bargaining units in this district, one settled June of 18, one settled June of 19, so we know rolling it forward it's going to be about $2.7 million of salary increases. Everybody else in the district is about $340,000 of salary increases. We have discussed new staff in this budget, and I'll bring up that sheet, which uh, is in the binder, um, the orangish form. Just a recap for the public. In order to implement full day kindergarten, as Dr. Gruccio presented, so first few positions there, four kindergarten teachers, two health and PE, two full-time specials, two part-time specials, and three um, resource-related services type um, staff members. In the special ed department, in order to comply with rolling forward our new schedules and our student needs in that department, we have um, resource room staff, two needed in uh, Davenport, behavioral specialist, uh, taking our current part-time behavioral specialist and making full-time, occupational therapist, two speech therapists, physical therapist, a supervisor of special ed working who's currently at 10 month, moving to a 12 month position to handle the student needs, as well as a director of special ed to run the department. On the district scope, we have our assistant TV station manager, who's currently working about 29 hours a week to be full-time to be able to work 40 hours a week. Our security guard staff, we went K-12 last year. We need an additional three part-time staff members. Coaches, um, we spoke about at the last meeting. A lot of the coaches were, we're calling one coach teams have um, either setups where one coach cannot cover multiple locations of students, 
so they need help. Um, or in this other situation is the volleyball program. The boys volleyball program is actually a new sport with a new assistant. That's a staff recap. So that's where that came from. Full day kindergarten, as Dr. Ruccio discussed, is 1.5 million. Supplies and textbooks. I show this as a highlight because year after year, I'd say for the last seven years I've been doing budgets, we keep cutting supplies and textbooks. This year, because all the curricular areas presented to the board, they all had great ideas to move student achievement, really follow our district learning goals. It did come to about $475,000 in resources. Uh, I just want to highlight, although that sounds like a lot of money, I decided to pull this off the Taxpayer's Guide to Spending. For those of you who don't know, you can Google Taxpayer Guides of Spending. It is a comparative statewide of like-sized districts, and our like size is a K-12 with more than 3,500 kids. Now we have like 7,500 kids, but that's the category we were put in, and they, bait you, they basically rate you amongst other districts your size and, and your um, K-12 situation. And they're saying, if you look at per pupil cost amount, year to year, for 1819, the budget that just closed, uh, we were nine out of 97. What that means is you take all 97 districts like us, we spent the least amount ninth. So we didn't spend zero, but we were ninth place, meaning we just don't put enough <laughs> in the resources for our staff to um, educate these kids. So that was an eye opener. Usually we highlight um, the next slide I have, but I, this was a good one I felt because it looks like a huge increase, but we're just really not spending enough on um, the resources. What website will we go to see that? It's on the New Jersey Department of Education. You can just Google, right on your Chromebook or wherever, New Jersey Taxpayer Guide to Spending. And you can, it's, a, it's actually like an eight page document. It compares um, legal costs, administrative costs, um, facility costs, like main, upkeep and maintain, uh, maintaining things, um, all kinds of fun facts, data. <laughs> what you're used to seeing is I do want to highlight for you, uh, we've heard multiple times from the public and even sometimes from a perspective of just community members and board members and our own staff, we're administrative heavy. Again, you take all 97 districts in that K-12, 3,500 kid population, we are spending the fifth like we are in fifth place, which is not a really a good honor. We don't want to be first. We are really doing the most we can with the least amount of people and money. We don't pay, sorry, we just don't, but we have great staff who will work for cheap and they do great wonders in this district and we're able to um, really just, you know, not use a lot of resources there. The state does recommend, I would say not recommend, the state average recommendation, did all 600 districts relate it, they say 10% of your budget it should be administration, or is administration. We are at 8.1. So although we are adding a special ed director, although it seems as though we're administrative heavy, we really aren't. So there's the facts. Board member questions, as Mr. Castellano said, these are the categories. It was, I think, an eight-page document in the end. Um, but I recapped just a few topics to kind of discuss with the public on some things that did come up. Lease purchase detail, we did show this at the last meeting, but I do want to show it to those who may not have been here. Uh, because it's not on our website, this is really what we call um, detail level where the board needs to see this. But until it's an actual approved budget and the lease purchase is approved and purchasing starts, it's not really for public um, to play with. So it's not attached to the document online. Uh, we did go through um, technology, our ITS department, as well as our facilities department needs and our transportation needs. So that's a highlight. It's also for the board's reference in their binders, um, in the binders in the public as well. So he recaps that. Capital reserve, we did do a year-to-year -year analysis last week. Um, I had a hard time expanding. I'm gonna try to keep doing it. Basically, overall, we have a beginning balance since 1617, hovers around $2 million. Um, Excuse me one second, slide it here. If you look at the additions, deposits every year, at the end of the year, the board says, hey, this is how much you know we have of unspent funds that we can put towards um, capital reserve. Some boards actually budget a certain amount a year. We are, don't have the liberty. We try to do, we're actually a reactionary type of um, purchasing and um, capital projects. So it's usually the end of the year. Um, we're looking at the end of this year, being able to put hopefully a million dollars in. Going into next year, um, and also another million dollars, which will give us the funding able to be able to handle uh, what the facilities department actually requested for projects for next year. 
which is listed here, also in the binders. Um, projects based on, this is working with the facilities department as well as each building um, principal as a big district need. There was about $7 million facilities budget submitted this year. Seven million. <laughs> of the seven million, we prioritize what could stay, what's reoccurring costs, um, what we can use lease purchase, and um, what can be done on a capital reserve. So this is actually funds separate from what's set aside outside of our regular everyday spending to do things such as you know repaving. There's some cracks in the district we should be doing preventative maintenance on, um, door replacements, uh, roofing projects, gang bathrooms, things of that nature. And district physician came up, I guess, with um, the vid, as John has dubbed it, <laughs> coronavirus, <laughs> COVID-19. Um, we have been in touch a lot with our, dis our district physician. It is 25,000 a year is one of the, um, the questions that came up. What does he do? How often does he come? He does come to the high school. Um, I want to say, I have to look at my response. Weekly, maybe? I think he comes to high school weekly. Um, and once a month to the um, middle schools. And he's always on call helps with our um, physicians and that is actually a statutory requirement um, and that his job description is actually in New Jersey statute of what he has to do for us as a district. Um, AppliTrack is our online application tool. Not only does it um, allow people to apply for jobs, we're able to you know, maintain them into certain job categories with a lot of little human error. Uh, we have um, the ability to do reference checking, rejection letters, um, sexual misconduct forms, so it's a very good tool, but that did come up as an expense that was questioned. Cell phones in the district. So overall, central administration, direct, what I call directors of, if you're leading a department, um, not curricular supervisors, um, only the high school principals, not every principal, um, but those are the people that would have a district cell phone because they need to be on call pretty much at all times, like director of facilities and our director of IT and those sorts of people. Um, but it was questioned on who has cell phones and um, how often are they paid. Facilities, there were a lot of questions on some of the facility lines. For example, um, we have a, a, in the budget to restrip and actually paint the gym floor and then refinish. Every year for the gyms, we kind of scrub them up, scuff them up, refinish them. Uh, we haven't done the gym floor of the high school since 2009, uh, which is really supposed to be a five-year rotation, but we don't have the money, so we kind of kept scuffing and refinishing but it's time. The paint underneath you can see is deteriorating in order to really keep the wood, um, really keep the wood to preserve it. We have to do it this year. Transportation, yes, we spend a lot in transportation with other districts, meaning I have to contract out. We have 100 um, routes here. Uh, we need more drivers. If anybody would like to drive a bus or know somebody who wants to drive a bus, we are definitely hiring. Great benefits package. Um, but for now, until we get those drivers, we're actually doing a campaign, and you'll, you may have seen it at, we do it at ShopRite, we're doing it on Planet Fitness, and actually on um, the Rock Station and Cool 93. <laughs> we're trying really hard to recruit some drivers. Um, until we get the physical bodies of the people, it's very difficult. So we are getting the equipment lined up. We are in the strategic plan in transportation, which will be spoken about um, April next month. They'll be coming to let you know where they are with their strategic plan and how they're gonna be rolling out the transition of the retirement of the director. Um, special ed, a couple things came up with programs, resources, um, staffing. Um, so budgets, all the budgets, if you ever look in the binders, they are all school-based budgets. There are some staff that don't have a school. Why don't they have a school? They're a district-wide employee. They help everybody in the district in that particular category. Um, if there's anything I missed in the administrative team that you want to highlight or the board members that was asked, they want to have a highlight for the community. I kind of just did the big chunk topics. It was, it was quite a long list. Okay. You have something? Go ahead. Um, I want, maybe you can bring this up a little bit better. I've been asked a couple times why uh, big units are not being changed you know, more effectively. I think it comes down to how we had to all of a sudden, and roofing, we had to all of a sudden build all these schools at the same time. And now at the same time, everything is starting to break down. So if you have anything more you'd like to address about that. Yes, yeah, so facilities is a big concern, and it was brought up in the conversation with facilities budget, not only refinishing the gym floor, but our replacement plan for the presentation from our facilities director of all the things that we have to replace now. It's all on the radar for now. We can't do it all now because it would require us going to referendum, which we know is 
an, a bad word at this point, but it's really, we've identified $30 million. $30 million of things that need to happen right now. Our facilities director and I, we're working very hard with our energy, New Jersey Energy Clean, trying to get as much as we can to do through an ESIP, which is an energy savings improve, um, improvement plan, um, hoping to at least acknowledge the first major things. But I would say, I'm not saying it out loud, but I'm saying next three to five years, we're probably gonna have to do something. Um, districts usually do referendums every five to seven years. We haven't done one since we built Miller. Miller was opened in 08, just to put it in perspective. We have a lot of things coming up um, that need some major repair. And I'm talking like rooftop units. When Tim presented to the board, we talked about the high school rooftop units. It's this big trailer truck size, um, you know, ventilation systems on our rooftop. Since then, the high school's been expanded on several times. Usually you can just take a crane, plop it off, put the new one on. We can't even get to the center of the roof of these units. We're talking choppers are gonna be lifting and moving. So it's gonna be a big deal. We really have to get it done. Um, so we're looking at solutions and hopefully within the next 30 days we'll be coming to the board with an ESIP plan or a plan B of some kind. But we are, we're trying to get solutions. Yeah. I just want to ask a quick question to make sure I was clear. So I remember you talked about the vestibule, the mm -hmm. security vestibule, yes. how they're in practice. The front entrances. Mm -hmm. um, included in last year? So that is included? funded by Capital Reserve. <coughs> okay. So if I bring that slide back up, I will zoom in because it's hard to read. This year, we opened up 1920 with a capital reserve balance of 1.8 million. Okay. We have not made a deposit yet. Mm -hmm. So my current balance is actually 437,000, this lower, but without the million. But this is what we've taken out so far this year. For the vestibule projects, it was 698,000. The architect fees to, and the engineer fee, fees and the boring and all the things that happened for Eagle Academies scope of work because we basically had to prepare the whole scope of bid realized it was way too much and we did say put a hold on that but i still have to pay all those um, scope fees i'll call them and also the last meeting we just had you authorized the alder fernwood middle school fire um, and safety things to be done so that's capital reserve which is outside of this budget thank you no problem question yes um chromebooks I know I asked the question before, but I just wanted to clarify. There's more. Right. There's a next slide. Oh. We are going to get to Chromebooks. I don't oh. want to cut you off, but we are going to get there, and then want to just put a pin in that. We are I'll definitely addressing that. a very Thank next you. slide. Okay, I had some questions. No Bye. problem. Okay. On the board questions, any questions on the board questions, and then we have more to recap. Okay. Haha, -ha, Chromebooks. <laughs> so, <clears throat> on the lease purchase list we showed you, we did have Chromebooks on there, and we did have Chrome tablets on there. At this time, with updates about the virus and China shutting down pretty much, um, all the factories have been shut down, I think, since the end of January. Acer, Dell, and I can't remember the third company name, they are not making anything. So even if we ordered Chromebooks through this budget process, we wouldn't get them until after January, February, maybe. So we decided, let's look at our plan again, redeploy what we currently have. We are keeping Chrome carts because right now we have carts of 30. We don't have classes of 30. So we wanna break up the carts and make more sets throughout the district and be able to distribute them a little bit easier. So the Chrome carts are staying into the lease purchase program, but we are cutting Chromebooks and we're cutting the Chrome tablets without the, but we're keeping about 40 of them for special ed specifically because that is something we're hoping is in stock and they really need to roll out the curriculum that's in this budget to be able to push that out. So um, that part is staying, but we are cutting out the rest. Okay, so so now your you, question about Chromebooks, go for it. Well, you answered a lot of it. Okay. How many Chromebooks do we currently have? Right um, Mr. Santilli's gonna pull up our cute little spreadsheet. He may not pull it up here, but he'll pull it up on his desktop. Please hold. <laughs> do you have something else after that, or is that just it? No, that's all. Okay, he'll pull that up. How many we have now. No all problem. Right, thank you. We'll have it as soon as he gets them. We'll go to the next two items. So this, is the this slide is specifically the changes to the last budget. That's the pink page that you have in front of you. There are three things that changed. Um, we usually print a whole other set, but the net difference came out to $5,000, and I didn't think it was very fiscally responsible to print out 20 binders of another 100 pages each. So what changed in this budget is basically we're removing the lease purchase amount, which is basically financed over three years, so the impact is about a third of that. We have breakage from retirees um, that were we have since retired, and replacement staff basically at a lower amount. So if somebody's retiring, they're making 90,000, the person coming in is at 54, we realize a breakage in there. 
And then we're increasing. We had an increase in tuition at transient students. You'll see on this agenda some out of district placements. We have to consider that into next year's budget. So those are three lines specifically. You will get new books next year because we will be voting um, next week, sorry, at budget 4.0. Mr. Santoni? About 3,500 right now. We are, the philosophy of the Chromebooks is three to one, excuse me, two to one, grades three to 12, two to one, except Miller School is at one to one. So if you counted all that up, that was our purchase we did, I want to say two years ago. That was the philosophy of that purchase. Thank you. No problem. Okay, good. Okay, keep going? Yes. I have another question, okay. So, oh, the budget calendar, that was the last slide of good stuff. <laughs> so budget calendar, where we are now, today is the work session. We're having budget discussion. We'll entertain more questions. Uh, next week, we will be meeting again and basically having the vote of what we are going to send, what budget we are going to send to the county. As a reminder, this is a budget in total by Fund 10, which we talked about the budgets, the buckets before. But fund 10 is what we're talking about now. Fund 20 is my grants that I'm expecting. They make you budget 75%. 75% of what we got this year, they just tell you to do it. So I send that. Fund 30, which we don't have any changes, and Fund 40, which is our debt service. You used to have a total line, and that's what you're actually sending to the county for approval, and that is what's voted on next week. Between next week and the budget hearing, the board will have another opportunity if something changes within the lines, but that's what the actual vote is for next week. Uh, Mr. President, I have one more question. Sure. Quick question. I have some that are, um, We talked about the closed circuit TV space, yes. um, the warranty. Yes. Um, how many years is the warranty for, and what's the cost? I know I had asked that somewhere. Uh, it's right in here. I'm going to grab a book. Okay. <laughs> I don't have it open. It is in your 11-000-266-4 line. I just got to pull it up. I don't have it right off. It is every year. It's an annual. The warranty itself, I thought was a, um, Steve will have to correct me on the actual warranty. I want to say it was three years, maybe five. But we do an annual maintenance, which basically covers everything for us anyway. 266. It is on page 25 of 43, and that's at the second line in. It has the CCTV warranty, uh, and it has all the different locations, the prices for the locations times 12 months. So you can look at it at your leisure, but that's where you're actually going to find it on page 25. Okay. And, it's that, and that in there is to represent the annual maintenance fee. Page 25 of 43. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I'll check. Any other questions from the board? Any, okay. Anything else, board members? Want to continue to on the slide? I'll tell them. Do you have another slide? No, no, no. After oh. I, talk, I went to about the vote. The very next meeting after the vote is the 24th. We had initially established at yes. reorganization. Let's talk about That's that. why I didn't want to stop. Um, at a reorganization, we did set up every Tuesday from now till the budget hearing, not understanding how much state aid we were going to get, how difficult this budget was going to be, and how much we had to actually discuss it. At this time with the budget questions today, next week. It's being canceled because it's after the budget vote to the county. We do still have two more meetings after that if needed to discuss it. We're looking at, can it's canceled, yeah. Originally also. Originally it was. It yeah. was due to the county. The budget was due to the county the March 25th. Champion. So that 24th right. would have been our vote, but the county then moved that date up to March the 20th. So, yep. so we follow the, if you look up the New Jersey um, elections calendar, it's actually on the Board of Elections calendar, our budget submittal dates. And that doesn't come out until after January, February, beginning of February. 31st, there is no meeting on the 31st. You have two Tuesdays off. Don't travel. <laughs> okay, I want to thank you else then on for that? an right. excellent thank you presentation once again, um, answering questions, responding, and summarizing uh, very, very effective and uh, very um, succinctly. Um, what I want to ask board members is once again, any questions, comments uh, for um, our administration on the budget, if I can ask um, that any questions be sent back to administration by Sunday evening at 5 p.m. So I'm asking for Sunday evening. Normally we 
we do close of business Monday for our regular uh, meeting agendas, but I'm going to ask Sunday 5 p.m. I want to give our administration two full days to respond to any of our questions. That gives us the rest of the week and the weekend to formulate any questions, but I want them to have some time next Monday and Tuesday because they've been very busy, not only with budget, obviously, but with um, the events of the day with the coronavirus issue. So um, that gives everyone enough time if we can please adhere to, to that timetable. Uh, with that, I'm going to open up to uh, questions or comments from the public um, for a three-minute period of time, please. Please come forward to the mic and give us your name and address for the record. Any comments, please? Well, okay. All right then, seeing none. Um, any additional comments or questions from uh, board members? Well, Lou and then Mike. Mine is totally off topic, if that's okay. I just want to make a, po a positive comment. It was lovely to come into the room tonight and see the history of Acarp and Township in the photo gallery on the walls. Yes. Uh, if the audience hasn't noticed that, it's the first time it's been up in a while. And I love the arrangement. I think Sharon Russell, a former art teacher at our high school, had something to do with the arranging. And thank you, Dr. Cuccio, and all your staff. There's the history, folks. If you want to look at Acarp and Township, I know Mr. Uh, Mike was down there pointing at the schools that he attended when he was five years old, six years old. And I could tell you some history also, but thank you all for anyone involved. It really makes the room look great, and we have our history in front of us. Thank you. Thank you. I totally agree, and I can't yes. wait till the final pieces yes. to put the awards back up. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mike and Tamika next. Well, I would just like to say again, I appreciate, I know we all do the hard work with the superintendent, the assistant superintendents, and Chandra put in to the uh, budget, and uh, we're still plugging along. We, I know we had a lot of questions, and I know I appreciate your patience as I make my way through it, and um, I appreciate everything that you're doing, so keep up the good work. Thank you. Very good. I was just going to say that um, I just wanted to thank the administration in reference to um, addressing the coronavirus and making sure that um, all the different pieces that are going on behind the scenes and what the state's requiring and what the county's requiring of the districts and being prepared and just, you know, just in case, worst case scenario, but just already thinking forward and making sure everything's in place. Absolutely. Mrs. Slough. Back to the, the budget and the, the vestibules, um, or the safety vestibules. It said that we're, it would be determined still about Eagle Academy. When, when do we think we'll be talking about that? We did, I met with um, Mr. Smith today and uh, we had discussed the condition of the building, um, which we know it's over 100 years old, but it, it still can accommodate uh, students and staff. Um, in terms of a vestibule, I know that was an, an, an outlier because it was costing a, a million dollars to um, you know, deconstruct and construct there. Um, we are looking at space in district. Uh, which is, um, you know, we have one step at a time, we get the full day kindergarten going. Um, there may be space, there, there may not be. So that's the next exploration that's going to go on. Um, but I am confident that we have one more year or two in, in the Eagle, Eagle Academy building. Any other, any other questions, board members? And, uh, administration, any, any final? I'm just going to close out by uh, sort of where I began, just by thanking our, our administration for working so hard, uh, as well as board members on, on this budget. Uh, everyone has worked extremely hard, and you can see it in the, uh, the excellent presentation and, and the contents. Um, and again, I want to also thank our administration for really working 24-7 to be um, out ahead of the coronavirus, um, doing everything they possibly can to
to make sure that we are as ready and prepared as possible. Um, so I thank you for both working. Uh, these are two major issues to be working on simultaneously. And uh, I thank you all very much. I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, a, a week from uh, tonight, next week on the 17th, we will meet again here at 7 p.m. Uh, though that is a regularly scheduled meeting, again, the focus of that meeting will also be our budget and we will be voting um, as noted previously, we will be voting on the budget um, in terms of sending a preliminary budget to the county uh, next Tuesday. So with that, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Good night, everyone. Thank you for coming out.